My name is Brother John. I'm with uh, CFM, and we're out here to praise God's name in public. There's nothing more important that we would rather do. We hope that all people have received the gospel message, and if not, we're going to talk about that right now. We live in a fallen creation where we failed to live up to God's word. We've fallen into our own pride in various ways, putting our thoughts ahead of God's and shows in the destruction that's going on all around us. It shows in the destruction that goes on the earth. But nevertheless, God is a God of love that even in our weaknesses still loves us. Even in our weaknesses, He allowed His Son to come down in human form, to die on a cross so that we could live, so that we could receive eternal life, so that we could be blessed, that we could be cleansed, so we could be made whole. That is the power of the gospel message. That's the power of God, and that's the power that is available to each and every one of you. No matter your background, no matter what reason you may have come here, we're proud to proclaim His name because we do believe the words. Romans 10, 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that message is available to you. That's available to you even if you've made a mess of your life, even if you've made a lot of mistakes, even if you're on to your 5th, your 10th, your 20th chance of trying to get things right, doing it your own way, I want you to know there is a right way with God. There is a narrow path that you can get back to. And you can walk away from the distractions of the world and celebrate the Lord. For in the end, you have to all make a decision on who is wiser, is man or God. And if you didn't realize God is an almighty being, He's the everlasting to the everlasting. He created the heavens and earth. He created all of you, and yet some people still believe that they are smarter than God. They still believe that their way is better. And yet some will give lip service to God. They will hedge their bets, as it says in Titus 1.16. They profess to know God, but they deny Him by their works. Rather than giving themselves fully to God as God requires, they choose to go their own way, or they choose to have one foot in with God and one foot in with the world. That is not what God requires. That's not the Bible message. The Bible message in Jesus' words, if you want to be my follower, you must deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. Notice he doesn't say live your best life possible, live your purpose, how you feel. Rather, he says, follow me, follow Christ's example. And that's a challenging thing to do here in the West. We are a me first society, very individualistic. And yet the Bible says, follow me. It does not say go your own way. It does not say mock the world. It does not say mock God, but rather it says, is seek the Lord. And that's why we're here today to proclaim His name and that you will seek the Lord, that you will humble yourself, you will let go of the pride. Pride is the word of this month. But it's man's pride, and man's pride does not give glory to God. Man's pride takes you further away from God. It's a rebellion, saying, I did this or I did that. Do not be deceived. Everything you have, your intelligence, your looks, your background, those are all things... God has given you. God has given you those gifts. And the question is, are you grateful for them? Or do you think that you somehow earn them? You have been given many things here in the West, many opportunities that others in the world do not have. And as such, you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to your brothers and sisters out here. That's why the second commandment of them all is to love your neighbor as thyself. Even here in Fort Worth in this beautiful day, there are people hurting in this city. There are people struggling. There are people who are down on their luck, never had luck, and they're looking for hope. And you good people could give it to them. You could, out of a Christian sense of charity, be that example for them. 
And so I'm harking to you back to the Lord. I'm harking to you back to the one that loved you, loved you even in your own wickedness, to lift you up. Just as Christ was lifted up on the cross, he too can lift you up in your lowest and darkest hour. And crowds like this, there's always some people who are suffering. They may walk around with smiles, but they hide them. They're dealing with things at home. They come from issues of broken families, maybe generational issues. I want you to know there is a God that cares about you. I want you to know there is a God that can save you. He can heal you. But you have to be willing to humble yourself. You have to be willing to let go of your ego and your pride and give it all to the Lord. That's why it says to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. We do not need any more lukewarm Christians here in the West. We need ones who will stand up for the gospel. We need ones that are unashamed of the power of God, proclaim his name no matter what the world may say. For the world does not love you. It is Christ that loves you. It is Christ that paid the sacrifice for you. For the Bible says when we are wicked, we are enemies of God. And we're wicked when we choose to go our own way, when we choose to be selfish, when we choose to think of ourselves before others, when we lie, when we cheat, when we steal. Most of you know these, these sins, as the Bible says, intuitively. And yet it is Christ that can drive you from those things. It is Christ that gives you that better example, the better example that we should follow. But you have to decide for yourself in a moment of time who will be your role model, who will be the one that you will give your life to. What do you truly believe in? Is there an afterlife? Where am I going? Is the path that I'm on, is it one that will honor God? For the Bible said there is a day of judgment coming for us all. And that's a very sobering message to those who are not saved. That's a very scary message to know that there's a day of judgment coming. For the Bible says in Romans 3, 23, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all failed to live up to the high, holy standard of God. For the Bible, the word holy means to be separate and apart from. It doesn't mean to be friends with the world. In fact, the Bible says friendship with the world is enmity with God. Be honest with yourself, my brothers and sisters. Is your walk one that glorifies God? Or are you chained to the world? Are you enslaved by the temptations and the distractions of the world? There are many things that is going on out the streets, but make sure above all that it's God that's being glorified. Make sure that's His words being glorified. Make sure your example or Christ's example is in your walk so that you can be a light to others. For the Bible says we are to be a light on a hill, not to be hidden under a bushel. And it calls you, if you call yourself a Christian, it's time to return the fold. It's time for those words to have meaning. It's time for them to be words that say more than just lip service. And I go to this building occasionally on Sunday, and I pay a little money in the collection plate. That's not what it means to be a Christian. What it means to be a Christian, as I said before, it means to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow Christ. To live out his example so that others can see your light and be moved and changed. Many of the churches here in the West are dead churches. Their light has burned out. We saw this during COVID when many of them shut their doors. We saw this where they were more concerned about being friends with the world instead of glorifying God. And there is an accounting for that. There is a reckoning. There is a purpose to your life. All these things... All these distractions, they will pass away and you will be naked before the Almighty God and you will have to make an account of every thought, word, deed, and action. How will you fare on that day? Be honest with yourself. How will you fare on that day? Because I came to realization a few years ago that I would not fare well on that day. I did not want to get justice on that day. Rather, I wanted to see the mercy and grace that only Christ can offer. But the Bible says you can have an advocate with the Father, you can have an advocate with Christ if you're willing to let, set aside your egos, humble yourself, and in a moment in time, Christ can lift you up just as He lifts me up. That is the beauty of the gospel message, the good news 
that even if you've made all the wrong choices in a moment of time, you can turn your life around and return to the Lord. But the difficulty here is in the West, with all the distractions that abound, all the temptations, we have things pulling on our time. We don't have time to uh, read God's Word. We don't have time to spread the Gospel. We don't have time to love our neighbor as ourselves as we're rushing around. We're living in a time when the world has become darker. There's more anger. There's more resentment. Everyone is stressed. They're concerned about what happens next. Who will you turn to in that time? Who will you turn to when the politicians fail you, when your community fails you, when your friends and your family even let you down? Who will be your bedrock? Who will be your foundation? May it be Christ, for it is Christ. He offers the greater hope. If there is no Christ, there is no hope in the world, and everything we do amounts to nothing. God bless you. But if that's true, what happened 2,000 years ago that a man died on the cross and three days later he was resurrected, the world has never been the same. That supernatural event transcends time, space, and it can lift you up, it can heal you, it can guard you against the wickedness in the world, and even though things are going down all around you, you still will have the Lord. For that's what the Bible promises you. He promises you a steadfast love that endures forever. Not the transitory love that we see promoted on the movies and the TV shows these days, but a love that will last forever, a love that loved you even when you were wicked. It says in Romans, he loved us even while we were still sinners, even when we rejected him. I know this because I was at the top of that list of those who rejected God, had no time for God, and was concerned about making as much money as I could and cared little about the people around me. But in a moment in time, God humbled me, just like he's humbled others in the Bible for my good. And that's what I offer to you. I offer God's love. I offer you God's message that he can fill you with that Holy Spirit so you can walk in a new path, you can walk in a new love, a love that will transcend the wickedness of the world. So I'm now going to turn the mic over to some of my brothers to preach this message. But if you have questions about faith, you have doubts, please come forward and talk to us. That's why we're here. We're proud to proclaim his name. We're more than happy to talk with any of you. God bless you all. This is an important message. I hear a lot of people saying that they know Christ. But I would have to ask you, does your faith measure up to the book of 1 John chapters 1, 2, and 3? Jesus says, if you love me, obey me. If you truly love God, you will show forth the obedience that we are commanded. That is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, strength, and soul. As Jesus stated, the second greatest commandment is this, to love others as yourself. So if we're not walking in love, biblical love, which teaches truth, because love rejoices in truth, it does not rejoice in iniquity, then we are deceiving ourselves. Listen up, there's a watered down gospel which you need to be very careful of. And it's this, that we can live our best life now as brother john stated and if you believe that you can live however you want to now you are deceiving yourself the bible says that the enemy the devil roams around like a lion seeking whom he may devour he has come to kill still and destroy and he does that through demonic doctrines and teachings teaching that come from men out of their own hearts they devise fables and things that are not according to the word of god but the bible says this in psalm 110 119, your word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So how do I know if I'm walking in the right way? I'm in the word of God. I'm reading it. I'm letting the Holy Spirit write his word upon my heart as he creates that circumcision within. That circumcision is made without hands. 
That is the Holy Spirit bringing you to life, cutting away the dead flesh as it were, cutting away the sin that is in our life. Not that we are perfect. No man is perfect except Jesus Christ alone. But indeed, if we say that we know Jesus and we walk in darkness, we are a liar, the Bible says, and the truth is not in us. A Christian should know that we ought not to be walking in the ways of the world. For the Bible says that friendship with the world is enmity with God. So if we claim to be a friend of God and yet we're walking in the ways of the world, we trust in what we're taught by the world, we're not examining ourselves as Paul says, you're leading yourself, you're opening yourself up to deception. I want to say this, that Jesus Christ is coming back. No man knows the day or the hour, but it is appointed that he will come back. I want to make sure that we all understand that it is appointed for man to die once and then comes the judgment. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that the angels stand around God worshiping Him, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. If we don't have the proper respect for God, the fear of God that we ought to have, then we fall into sin. All who come near Him must fear Him. They must love Him. We must trust Him. Put Him as the Lord, as the God above our lives, not nitpicking and putting Him where we think we should put Him. Listen, the world doesn't need a lukewarm, watered-down gospel that has no power to save. You do know that Jesus Himself warned about hell 42 times in the New Testament. Believers themselves are warned in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9-10. through 10. It says this, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. My friends, I'm telling you this because many are under deception. You think it's okay to walk in drunkenness, to walk in lewdness, to celebrate the pride that comes with this world, to celebrate sin, homosexuality, whatever it may be, whatever your vice is, I'll tell you this, that Jesus Christ can set you free. He can heal you. He can take those chains and break them. He can make a eternal gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put Him to an open shame. So this has the ideal that if we claim to know Jesus Christ, yet we walk in willful sin, we deny Him from our actions. Our actions talk about who we are. If we truly love Him, we're going to be caring for one another in godly fear. The Bible says that pure and undefiled religion is this, to care for the widows and the orphans and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. So there's an element there where we are called to holiness by keeping ourselves unspotted from the world. And this is a work that's done through the power of the Holy Spirit, praise God. As He works in us, He changes us and He conforms us to His will, no longer being in our own will. Paul says that he has crucified himself he has reconciled himself, is crucified with Christ. That it is no longer he that lives, but Christ that lives in him. I have to ask you, everyone that professes Jesus Christ, have you reconciled yourself, is crucified with Jesus Christ? Have you died to your sin, no longer walking there in it, but instead yielding yourselves to Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit? Are you allowing him to work in you? The Bible says that uh, God does not take any pleasure in the death of the wicked. He is calling you to repent, to trust in Him, to know that He is the Lord, that He indeed is coming back, and that the resurrection is indeed true. If we who believe that the resurrection is true and that God did what He said He did 2,000 years ago, that it was by the arm of the Father, Jesus Christ was raised from the grave, if we believe this to be true, then we ought to be living like it, living like He's coming back. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 gives an ideal of the coming of Jesus Christ. Paul says, Let no one deceive you, for that day will not come, unless the falling away happens first, and then the man of sin is revealed. Listen up. Many are under deception. Many are believing whatever they want to believe. 
but we always need to hold all things according to the Word of God, to the light of His Word, and understand that His ways are right. His true Word is always something that we can trust in. Let's continue on. Romans 6, verses 1 through 4 says this, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that, G that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Come talk to us. This is the gospel. This is what we're trying to bring to you. All men everywhere have fallen short. We have all sinned. There is none righteous under heaven, no, not one, except for Jesus Christ. He is the only one. He is God on high. In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and all things that were created were created through Him. There was nothing that was made that was made without Him. In verse 14, it says that He dwelt among us. He put on flesh and He dwelt among us. This is Jesus Christ the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. He's not an angel. He was never created, but instead, He has always been God, second person of the Trinity. He stepped down from on high to take the wrath of God upon Himself that we might be reconciled unto the Father through Him, by His blood. It is by the blood of Jesus Christ that we can be free, that we can be set free from the bondage of sin, no longer having to worry about the wrath of God to come upon men. The wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Understand this. There is a day coming. He is coming back. And he will be coming back with fire in his eyes and a sword that protrudes from his mouth. And he's doing this to bring judgment upon the sinners and the unrighteous. Those who rejected the only sacrifice. The only thing that's going to matter in your life is that sacrifice, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. If we reject that, we are rejecting God. Just like the Jews did, they rejected it, yet they will come to Him. The Bible says that there is a day when they will look upon Him whom they have pierced. And that's prophecy concerning Israel. But concerning us now, the Gentiles, listen, whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, it doesn't matter. He is called all to Him. We all have access through Jesus Christ. We can all come to Him and have the hope of salvation by believing in Him, understanding that He is Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the only one that we have access to the Father. So I want to continue with this and what Paul says. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. So if we proclaim Christ, we should not be walking willfully in that sin. If we are, then something's wrong with their faith. Something's wrong with the message that we heard. Okay, There has to be the aspect of repentance. There has to be that godly sorrow. We need to be meek and humble before the Lord God Almighty and understand exactly who He is, a God who was three times holy and had to send His only Son to die on the cross. The message of the cross is two-sided. Yes, it is God's love. It is God's love. God loves you. That is no question. There is no question to that. He demonstrated that by sending His only Son to die while we were still yet sinners. But the other side of the cross is the wrath of God against sin, and this is why we preach what we preach, because we want you to be reconciled through Jesus Christ, the one and only. Now going back to what Paul says here, but now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Listen up. We can create our own image of God according to our own likeness 
as it says in Romans chapter 1. If we're not careful, we can make up our own God that says, yes, you know what, the God that loves me is okay with me drinking this beer and getting drunk, getting a little tipsy. The God that loves me is okay with me going out and having a little affair on my wife or having a, uh, a, a slipping into fornication. If we're not careful, we can make up this God according to our own image. We need to measure and test all things once again to His Word. According to the image that created Him, we are to cast these things away from us. Jesus Christ died that we might be saved from them. Romans 6.14 says this, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Okay? So what does this mean? There are a lot of people that say, well, we're not under law, we're under grace. Well, if you're under grace, then sin will not have dominion over you. This is Paul's point here. He's um, really contending with the Judaizers that are afraid that this grace would bring in and usher in freedom and sin, yet Paul says, no, grace does not mean that we are to continue walking in sin. That's not to say that, that we won't fall and that we might stumble. Indeed, this is true because he knows our frame. He created us. No man is sinless and perfect, only Jesus Christ the righteous. But once again, we're not to be walking willfully in our sin. 1 Corinthians, we read that already. We're going to continue on. He who covers his sin will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes will have mercy. I want you guys to get this point. Please bear with me just a little bit. He who covers his sin, if you do not recognize, if you do not confess, if you want to put on the act that you are a good... Check. Is it on? Check. No. Oh. oh, there we go. Check. Hallelujah. Jesus says that he is the way and the truth and the life and that no man can come to the Father except through him. Jesus says to deny yourself and to pick up your cross and to follow him daily. For God did not give his son so that we could continue in sin, but God gave his son so that we could be set free from sin. We must deny ourselves and pick up our own cross. That means put to death what is earthly, crucify the flesh, and turn from our sins. The Bible says that all lives will be in the part and lake of fire that burns with sulfur. And the reality is we've all lied. We've all sinned against God. We've, no, nobody's perfect. If I asked anybody here today if they're perfect, they would all say no. That's because we've all fallen short of God's glory. And God is perfect and holy and righteous. And since we could not keep his law, God sent his only son so that he could die for us so that we can have eternal life in his life's blood. The last three words that Jesus said on the cross was, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. If you're in a court of law and someone else pays your fine, if you have speeding fine tickets and somebody pays those fines, the judge can legally let you go. And that's what Christ did on the cross. That's why he said, it is finished. But if you're in a court of law, many of, you, many of us like to uh, say that we're going to go to heaven because of our works, but it's not, it's not because of our works. The Bible says that all of our works are, like un, are unclean, like filthy rags before God. So what can we do to have eternal life? Well, all that we have to do is just turn from our sins and put our trust into the Lord like you would trust a parachute. But the, only, but the reality is the real reason why people don't turn to Christ is honestly because of pride. You guys want to make it on your own ways and on your own terms. But see, look at what it's caused the world. Look what it's caused to the world. It's caused destruction and chaos. So when are we gonna, when, when are we gonna realize that our way is not our way, and that our way is not going to work, but only God's way is going to work because He is perfect and holy, and we are not. The Bible says that the heart is the most deceitful of, above all things. You can know it. So if you're trusting your heart today, well, you're deceiving you, yourself. We must put our trust into the Lord. We must turn from our sins and believe on Him, not believe in Him, but believe on Him, put our trust in Him, and He'll renew your mind, He'll give you a spirit and he'll remove that heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. But we have to humble ourselves. 
It's not worth holding on to the things of the world if we're going to lose them anyway. Seek for what is eternal, which is after death. Don't seek for the things that are going to be here today and gone tomorrow. Our life is like a vapor. It's going to be here today and gone tomorrow. Then next comes judgment. Don't be distracted by the things of the world, but be focused on the things that are on eternal. Jesus says that he is the only way to, to the source of life. It is a narrow gate, but it is the only gate. And we must turn to him. We must deny, our, we must deny ourselves. We have to deny ourselves because that will lead to hell and destruction. See what happens when men start to rely on the world? It causes destruction and chaos and wars and hatred towards one another. But the Bible says if you have any hate towards your heart, then you're a murderer at your heart. So we have to turn from our sins and we can't do it on our own and that's just the truth. But once you have access to the Holy Spirit, He'll change your mind. He'll change you. We cannot change our, ourselves. The Bible says in Matthew 16, 25, 25, for whoever would save their life would lose it, but whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. So we can't rely on ourselves. We can't change ourselves. If you're trying to change yourself today, you're going to be trying the rest of your life. You can only allow a perfect, a holy God to change you. He is the only one that can change you. So we must turn to the perfect and holy God who sacri sacrificed His only Son. The, per the second person of the Trinity left His throne to come down to this earth and die for, us, die for us while we were yet sinners. We're wicked and evil people and nobody likes to, likes to hear that, but Jesus says that there is no one good but God. So if you claim to be a Christian, you claim to be a good person, are you the liar or is Jesus the liar? Because we like to hold our standards to our own moral values instead of God's. We create a cute and cuddly God to suit ourselves. But re the reality is God is perfect and holy. And we cannot justify ourselves because of our works. If you're in a court of law and you you're charged with, let's say, murder, and you say, well, judge, what about the thing, all the good things that I've done in my life? The judge is going to say, I don't care. You've broken the law. You've earned the death sentence. And it's the same with God. He's paying us in debt. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. In other words, He's paying us in debt of our, of, of our sins. If you're at a job and you're working 40 hours a week and you get paid at the end of the week, well, He's paying you in your debt, and it's the same with God and our sins. So what can we do to be set free? We have to turn to the Lord. We have to call upon the name of the Lord, and you shall be saved. But many people claim to be Christian. There are many pastors that claim to be Christian, but they're using the church as a business. And Jesus spoke of these, of, these, uh, of these false teachers before they came to pass. Many will call themselves the Christ, but they are, not the true, they are not the true Messiah because they did not raise from the dead. There are multiple gods out there, but only one revealed themselves. Only one raised, was risen from the dead and defeated death, and that's Jesus Christ. The Bible says that people hate God without a cause. But the truth is, if you keep living that, li living in that bondage and sin, then, uh, then judgment day will not be good for you. But Jesus sent his son so that we can have eternal life. He died for us while we were yet sinners so that we can have eternal life. Yes, Jesus did come as a sacrifice. He did die on a cross from us, but he is coming back again soon. And he's not going to be that sacrifice for you. He's going to come to judge the world when he comes back. He's not going to be that Lamb of God that, 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 that everybody pushed around. He's going to be the, the, judge, the judgment of the world, and he's going to save the ones that have been waiting for him. Are you waiting for him, or are you, are you living the life that you want to? Serving Christ isn't about living your best life now. It's not what, what the churches preach these days about living your best life now and all these great things are going to happen to you when you, sur when you sur surrender to God. No, it's going to be full of struggles and putting to death our old self and turning to Christ. That's what, it's, that's what it means to live for Christ. He died for us so that we must live for Him so that we can have eternal life. So I urge every one of you guys to turn to Christ today because you don't know when you're going to die. 150,000 people die every single day. That 150,000 people could be you. 
many people today hear that and they say, oh, that could never be me. But you just don't know. That's why Jesus says today is the day of salvation because we could die at any moment. So I urge you guys to turn from your sins and to put your trust into the Lord. Have a change of mind. Don't justify yourself. You can't justify yourself in front of a holy God. You can only be justified by the blood of Jesus. And from then, He'll renew your mind, give you a spirit, and change that heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. We have to turn from our pride. We have to humble ourselves and turn to the one and true living King who is Yeshua. We must turn from our sins. The things that you have now are going to be gone in the next 60 years. So why focus on now? Why be distracted with what's going on now? Why not focus on the things that are eternal, which is in Christ? But He is the only way, He is the only truth, and He is the only one that brings life. And through Him, we can only have life. So I urge everyone to repent and put your trust into the Lord. I was once a sinner and now I'm a saint. I was taking drugs, taking pills, and doing all sorts of, sorts of ungodly things till, till the Lord encountered me and saved my life. And He can do the same for, for you. He's been so merciful to you guys today to keep you alive so you guys can hear the gospel message. You got, as long as you still have life, uh, breath in your lungs, as long as you're still breathing, you can still turn to the Lord. It's never too late. If you're still living right now and hearing this message. And many of you guys are listening right now and you're with your friends or with your family and you're too embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. Turn to the true and living King who has died and rose again and defeated death. Turn to the one who loves you, who died for you, who left his throne and came here to be persecuted and to be brutally tortured and hung on a cross. And he rose again and defeated death for you. So, my friends, it's time to humble ourselves and put our trust into the Lord. And yes, most people are unfortunately going to hell. My family is honestly on their way to hell. And that's just the reality. But God has been using me to share the word to you guys and to my family in the hopes that they may be saved. But we have to humble ourselves, guys. We have to turn from our ways. And that we can only do that through the access of the Holy Spirit. So if you want to receive the Holy Spirit now, you can come to us and talk to us. And we will pray for you. Because God loves you and He died for you. That He brought His only Son. But we don't just believe in Him. We know Him. We turn to Him. Not just during Good times... Everybody. We got a kettle drive not just during times of struggles. But we sacrifice our lives for Him as He did for us on the cross. So turn to the Lord while you guys still can. Humble yourselves. Turn to the Lord. If you guys have any questions, we'll be here. God bless you guys. Sinners will not enter into the kingdom of God. Do not know that when you, when you do something wrong, that is a sin against God. And those sins are crimes. And Jesus is a judge. When you make those, when you make, when you make those crimes, you will be put into his courts when you pass. And when you don't repent and ask God forgiveness, you will be sent to hell. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that, it, but that the world through Him might be saved. Jesus came to save us, not so that, not so that we can continue in our sin.
He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not but he who does not believe in him is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. When you repent of your sins and ask God forgiveness, he will forgive you and accept you into his kingdom. If you continue doing the wrong things you are doing, okay. drinking, fornicating, doing doing anything that that you know is that you know is wrong, well repent and God, ask God forgiveness. When you ask God for forgiveness, he will forgive you and accept you in his kingdom. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to, come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. A lot of people here, a lot of people here say they know Christ and that they believe in him, but what's the, what's the actual truth? Do you really believe in him? Do you really accept him? If you don't accept him, then he will be, he'll send you to the depths of hell. Um, sorry, I just, they are saved in that they can do what they want. They can continue drinking. They can continue doing the bad things they are doing. But that's not the case. People, a lot of people state John 3:16, that God so loved the world that He sent His only, He sent His only Son to die on the cross, and that is true. But they don't know, but they don't say, it, but they don't mention the other part of that scripture. Scripture. John 3:18 says, "He who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe in." is condemned already a lot of people they say Jesus loves them and they, they can continue hey welcome to Fort Worth Texas welcome to Fort Worth Stockyards National Historic District Jesus we loves you but not so his sin not your sin you are spending your afternoon with us today we've got a lot of stuff going on